Uh, can everybody hear me all right? I don't like using the microphone. I usually have a loud enough voice the way it is. At least my wife tells me that. So if, 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 if can everyone hear me? Good. All right. Uh, my name is Matt Robert. I'm with NRCS also. I'm an agricultural engineer in Illinois in the state office. And I'm going to talk about a preliminary study that I did on uh, sand settling lanes. Thank you, Matt. Oh. Yeah, that's it. I'm out of here. All right. A little background here. Uh, in Illinois, in southern Illinois, we had an influx of uh, dairy farmers wanting sand settling lanes uh, and a certain design uh, done by, uh, by NRCS. And uh, so I went out and uh, I wanted to uh, check and see if these actually worked. And as Jeff talked about with sand, sand laden manure, one of the most important things is that farmers like it. It's really good for animal health and uh, controlling mastitis, but it's really a killer on the waste treatment system. It uh, stores, uh, takes up a lot of uh, manure storage volume, and it also uh, a killer on the pump and uh, different mechanical issues or mechanical items. So I went out to uh, five different Illinois uh, sites that had these and I did step nine of our conservation practice which is evaluate the site and I evaluated each one of these and I wanted to compare them to the actual standard that we have which uh, Jeff talked about 632 which is waste separation facility. But in particular, inside that standard, we had certain criteria for uh, sand separation length, which is uh, the hydraulic retention time of being uh, between three to five minutes for the sand separation lane, and also the flush velocity in that sand separation lane of one to two feet per second. And I wanted to see how these actually work with, uh, with that criteria. So the newer sand separation lanes, they, what the system is, is that it's the sand separation lane. This is a picture from the uh, freestall building. And the transition area going down is just an open lane, goes down to the sand separation lane. On each side, you can see uh, concrete storages. And the flush water goes down and takes a hard turn, 90 degree turn, and the liquid, the flush water, goes into these uh, concrete storages. In those concrete storages, the liquid is siphoned off and goes on to uh, earthen uh, storages to be reused as flush water or as uh, uh, land application liquid. The solids stay in that concrete storage. And the solids is the sand that doesn't get collected in the sand lane and also the solid manure. And that gets uh, taken out and land applied after the liquid is siphoned off of it. Uh, here's two more pictures of the sand, uh, of the new systems. I, there are three of them that I evaluated. And they were done within the last five years or so. And then the other two were older sand separation systems that I'll show you that were done within the last 10 years. But these new systems, you can see here, this is the concrete storage. That's the weir that the liquid is siphoned off of. And the liquid goes out through this here and is pumped to the earthen storages. You can see here, this is a picture of uh, another one of the newer ones. And you can see this one is full and this one is uh, getting filled up. Those uh, concrete storages, it takes about three to six months for them to be filled up. So the flush water is constantly going into one of them for three to six months. The liquid is siphoned off and the solids are staying and it takes that amount, about that amount of time, depending on the site, for the solids to build up that much uh, to be full. Whenever it's full, the other one is emptied out 
or should have been emptied out already, and they start using the other one. So then the one that's full has three to six months to dry out, and then solids can be taken out, and the process goes on again. That's the theory behind it. Same theory. So, now on this one here, the difference is instead of having uh, the, a transition uh, area that's an open lane, this one uses a pipe here, a 24-inch PVC pipe that takes the flush water from the free stall and takes it down to the sand, uh, sand lane and empties it out right there. And I'll talk about that a little later also. The older lanes, this is... Uh, one of the, this is the oldest one, and this one is just a straight sand lane, as you can see here. And once again, the flush water is coming from the free stall and goes and is uh, uh, transported to the sand lane via these two uh, gravity flow pipes. The sand, or, or the flush water, goes down and it goes into an earthen pond. And this producer has two other earthen ponds, and once again. The last one, the uh, water from that last pond is used for flush water, and then uh, the rest are, uh, is land applied. And as you can see here, the sand is co uh, collected or deposited on the sand lane. What he does is he comes in with a scraper or a uh, bobcat, scrapes it up, and places the sand right here. And you can see a pile right there. But it's right here, and the sand is deposited right there, left there for three to six months, so then dried out, he'll turn it every once in a while so he can reuse it. And now it's one of his main purposes of having this type of system. The last one was the one that was really different from all the other designs. This one had a hairpin curve in it, as you can see right here, where the flush water came down, did the hairpin curve, and then went out this outlet right here into once again, earthen storage. And they uh, were able to come in from here to scrape the sand lane. Now, take note, this is, a, this is a sand lane, and there's water in it. Just a note for, you know, future reference on uh, my results. So here's the parameters and the uh, different data that I collected and did for each one of the sites. The first three were the newer systems. Four was uh, the one with the straight lane, and five was the hairpin curve. I'm going to go briefly through this. If you really like data and so forth, read my paper, I, and you could talk about it. But I do want you to notice the lane velocity, which is uh, in feet per second, the hydraulic retention time, and also, lastly, look at the Manning's number. And, of course, the, this is the producer estimated sand recovery is what they said that the, how much sand they were recovering in the sand separation lane. So, for the results, uh, first, uh, asked every producer and uh, looked at the designs. I was, I was fortunate enough to have the design of every one of these since NRCS uh, worked with the producer on these. Every uh, design did not use a sand gradation. No producer had the sand gradation for these sites. So, in other words, they just used a general gradation curve for the sand, or they didn't even use one at all in the design of these sand lines. And that's a critical, critical item. We need to make sure that whenever we're designing the sand lane, we have to know the uh, sand gradation for that site, what they're using for uh, sand bedding. I was fortunate that uh, every one of these producers was getting the sand from the same area, which is down by the Mississippi River, just east of St. Louis. But their sand gradations were different. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it, it fumbled me, but it was really interesting to see that, that kind of information. And on some of these, uh, some of them were using a lot heavier sand than others, and it would have made a it made a difference. Um, having uh, if you if we'd have, if we'd have known that, we'd have been able to uh, determine the sand lane velocity a lot better. As as 
noted on my uh, previous one, all the sand lane velocities were higher than what our criteria asked for. None of them were within the 1 to 2 feet per second. The lowest one was 2.4. And I think one of the higher ones was even up in near 4 feet per second. That's way too fast for that sand to settle out in. The hydraulic retention time, two of them were above, uh, and a, uh, one of them was barely within the retention time. But I'll talk a little bit later about why that was. But the two others, I couldn't even get a retention time because the system was not working properly. And that's because overall, uh, the last, the last one with the water staying in there, that sand lane was actually working as a settling basin and not as a, uh, sand separation lane. And that's one of my results too about the outlet. Um, and, uh, the, the uh, third one, uh, the producer had a problem with the delivery system. It wasn't totally, it was still a new system and he was still working out the bugs really, uh, bad. And he had a lot of other problems with it that he was still trying to work out how to actually work with the system. But, um, with that, uh, the better, uh, oh, if we would have known the, uh, gradation, sand gradation would have had a better accuracy for the sand recovery volume, volume, which we would have, they, they said they were getting 80%. They actually weren't. And they would have had a better uh, recovery volume and a, a better design for the sand storage area, which we found was inadequate for most sites. So, also, they weren't doing uh, very good record keeping. They had a very inaccurate amount of volume of the sand volume recovered. They said they were recovering 80%. These two sites here were using the same amount of sand, and they both said that they were recovering 80%. This pile is significantly less than this pile. And the sad thing is, is this pile is well less than 80% recovery. They were not even close to 80%. The, uh, one of the sites uh, was doing a good job of recovering a lot of sand, but it was also recovering a lot of manure in that sand also. But overall, what needs to be done is we need to talk to them about doing some basic operation or uh, record keeping, recording how much sand you're collecting each week. So you could actually look and see, I'm supposed to be collecting this much. My pile's supposed to be this big. It's supposed to be 12 feet wide, 6 feet high after the week. Mine is only 3 foot high. What's going on here? What's the problem? Determining you know, simple little things like that, something that they could quickly see and see notice that there may be something different, and using that for the record keeping that would be important. Also, none of these producers were given an O and M for this system. That was that was eye opening for me, because. When you work with NRCS, we require that the producer gets an O&M. <laughs> so we, we fell off on that one. That was that was a critical thing there. But in that O&M, we need to have some very basic information, stuff that they can, while they're just going through and they're checking the cattle or whatever else, or they're scraping, they can see this or do this really quick and do a you know rule of thumb that, hey, everything's looking all right here. Uh, first is the flush uh, portion of the system. Even though uh, it's not the sand lane, the flush uh, volume and the flush time is critical for that sand lane to work properly. And for that to be in the right uh, parameters is critical. So given the producer, if he has a tower system, say, hey, your water has to be filled up this much in the tower, or it takes this amount of time to fill uh, for the water to fill up the tower, that's what you need. Or measuring the time of your flush uh, of your flush going through the uh, alley, sit there and just time it. Is it two minutes? Is it two and a half minutes? What if it's your if it's only one minute? That will that that can give a producer a good rule of thumb of whether his system is actually working properly or not. Also, another critical and this this one was uh, very alarming was the liquid level of the earthen waste storage. 
One of the, the one producer that was having problems where I couldn't get the uh, hydraulic retention time was because he was emptying out his earthen storages completely. And these were the earthen storages that was being used for flush water. What was happening was, whenever he uh, emptied them out, he had a very low liquid volume. And he was still, that water was still being used. That low volume water was still being used for the flush water. So in other words, he was using a very high solid, dirty water for cleaning or for the flush system. And that's not going to work. So, and he was never told that. He learned after the fact. So for another month or two, he had dirty water continually flushing up there because he didn't want to use uh, all his well water to uh, use for a flush system. But we need to give them a minimum volume in that O&M. Say, hey, on your staff gauge, three foot, that three foot limit, that's as far as you go. You don't pump out any, any less than that, or four feet, or whatever, whatever's needed. And the last is regular cleaning of the sand lanes. The sand lanes that these producers, they were cleaning them maybe twice a week, and that was most. They need to be cleaned daily because most of the time, the design, whenever you're designing the sand lane, you're designing it for the hydraulic grade of the concrete that uh, is put there. If you uh, don't clean it regularly, sand's going to build up and your hydraulic grade is going to be different. It's just going to affect your velocity. It's going to affect your retention time. It's going to affect your slope and everything else. So you're totally changing your system. Especially whenever you have a high deposition in certain places in the sand lane. The other thing is, is uh, better design of the transition area. Uh, I saw on most of the designs and that the transition area was always an afterthought. All they cared about was making sure they got flush water from the freeze stall to the sand lane. They weren't thinking about anything else. What was, what was most convenient? What was easiest? Well, the problem is, is that some of them was using uh, gravity flow pipes for taking flush sand laid manure through there. When you do, you need a higher velocity so you don't have settling in those uh, in those gravity flow pipes. And then they came out, they emptied out directly at the beginning of the sand lane. So normally you have a velocity of around six or seven feet per second at the start of your sand settling lane when it's supposed to be two feet per second or one foot per second, somewhere in between there. And these, all the sand lanes were designed for the length that is needed for the retention time of, with the velocity of one to two feet per second. They didn't have any additional length on it for uh, that uh, velocity to slow down to get to there. So that's, a, that's that was really critical. What I saw was that, uh, Transition, open channel transition uh, systems worked a lot better. Uh, producers liked them also. Uh, they gave them a little bit more room to work with and everything else, but also they they were some of them were scraped in this area too because they were getting sand deposition there. But they seemed to work a lot better uh, than the uh, pipe systems. What we're getting now in Illinois, actually with these pipe systems, is that. Uh, Designers are proposing a uh, somewhat of a like a stilling basin right there at the uh, end, and I'm going. I'm telling them, I'm like, how's that going to work? It's going to slow down the velocity, but what it's really going to do is just kill all the energy right there, and you're going to have everything deposited there, manure and sand, and that's not going to work. And they're like, but the velocity slows down, <laughs> and I'm like, it's. You're not understanding the purpose of this system. So, in uh, another result, using more realistic design assumptions. Uh, when I talked about the manage number, uh, looking at all the designs and calculations for it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, with the manage coefficient, they all used a higher manage coefficient than. Uh, what was actually calculated for that site. They all used uh, 
0.017, and whenever I back calculated using all the data that I got on the site, the actual men's number was closer to 0.012. That made a 20% velocity difference, and also it, 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 would, it should have increased the length of your uh, sand separation lane, and that's why all theirs was uh, a lot shorter. This is something that we, I believe that really needs more uh, data and more thorough research done. Kent universities, because <laughs> uh, I mean the work I did was this preliminary. Uh, the sand outlet. This is one of the critical things. All the outlets were too small. They need to be bigger. What was happening was the flow was coming down the sand lane, and because they were turning and going uh, going into uh, storages or whatever else, it was changing the hydraulic grade. It was backing things up. And this, either the outlet needs to be straight ahead, or if it's turning, those outlets need to be bigger. And on that fifth one that I was talking about, where you saw all the liquid in the sand separation lane, that outlet was only 18 inches wide. So that's what was happening. All the water was coming down, and it was stopping. And it was making a, it was making a settling basin instead of a sand lane. Um, lastly, in my paper, I have a, a, a web link to uh, some videos showing uh, the sand separation lanes that I have, that I uh, uh, looked at. The videos, there's three of them, and they show the flush water coming from the freestall to the transition area through the sand lane. Our, our public affairs did a great job uh, editing them. They took my voice out of it, so there's no volume in it. And that's good because I was a little excited whenever I was video. So anyway, that's it. Any questions? Yes. What? Oh, bad. Oh, no problem. Yes. Sand. Oh, manure and sand, yes. Yeah. What, what was happening, those concrete basins, they're collecting a lot of sand also. And that's because the sand lanes were not working as effectively as they were. But it was, uh, those concrete basins were used to collect uh, the solid and the, uh, and the sand that was not being uh, collected in the sand. Lanes. That's what they were used for. Right. So, I mean, manure recovery is on the lane will sell. Which part? Uh, all right, let's let's take this yeah, question. Yeah, all right, thanks, man. Oh.